I'm going to give you three topology tips that you're going to need if you're trying to model cars in Blender. Number one, how to add more geometry to your mesh without using the subdivision surface modifier. This is important for two reasons. We all know that when you're trying to add details to your object, especially if you're using sub D workflow, the best way to do it is to add more geometry to your mesh. And you don't want to do this by just adding loop cuts to an area because this is going to give you highly concentrated geometry on some parts of your mesh. And as you can see right here, this might completely fuck up your model. The second reason is that sometimes you need to add more geometry, but you don't want to use the sub subdivision surface modifier. The problem that you might get if you're using a subdivision surface modifier is this. So you want to subdivide this to add more geometry and you might add one level of subdivision surface and then you apply this and now you got more geometry. The problem is that now your edges also became round and you lost the original shape of your mesh. Do you understand what I'm saying? A second ago we had an edge right here on this corner and it was very obvious where these two are supposed to intersect and now we can control this easily, we can add a bevel, we can do whatever we want, we can work with this. But as soon as you apply the subdivision surface modifier, this is no longer a sharp edge and the position of this edge loop has been changed and we can't get this back. So we need more geometry but we can't apply the subdivision surface modifier because as you can see that's destructive and it might fuck up our mesh. So we need more geometry but we don't want our edges to be rounded. So here's what you can do. Select everything, W to subdivide, and you already understand that when you subdivide something, you get more geometry, but it doesn't become smooth. You can see that right here, we still have the shape of the old geometry, but it's like we just added a loop cut on every single face segment. And this new geometry just acts as supporting loops for the geometry that we had before. As a result, your edges get sharper, and we still have the old geometry exactly in the same place. Now, the problem is that we also got some loop cuts, which are horizontal from this perspective, which makes our our mesh appear a little bit blocky. As you can see right here, this surface is no longer smooth. And this is exactly because this new geometry is acting as supporting geometry for these horizontal edge loops. Now this is good on the vertical geometry, but not on the horizontal geometry. So we need to do a little bit of relaxation on these edges. And here's how you do that. First, go to edit, preferences, add-ons, type in loop, check this box right here to activate this add-on called loop tools. And now in edit mode, you can press N. On the side here, you will find the edit menu, loop tools, and you have a bunch of new tools here, which you did not have before. This shit is extremely useful for topology. And I use this shit all the time on my channel. I'm using 3.6.5 because I'm an old man. I don't want to update blender so for me when i press w i also get my loop tools here i would highly recommend that you also get a shortcut where you can quickly access this without having to go on the side here anyway that's a different topic i can make a separate video recommending some shortcuts which you guys have to create to make your workflow faster if you want to see that let me know in the comments below so here's how you relax this we need to select all the vertical geometry like this and we can do that with shift alt right click and luckily we don't have to select all of these manually we only have to select a few of them in a couple of different places and then we can press shift g select similar direction you might have to increase the threshold down here to something like 0.1 just make sure that you don't select any of the horizontal edges now that everything vertical is selected all we have to do is press w loop tools relax or you can go over here to the side edit loop tools relax and then you're going to get this little menu down here where you can control this a little bit better for example we can increase the number of iterations if we set the number up to five it's the same as if we repeated this function five times you can also switch between linear and cubic it gives you a slightly different result check what works better for you if you have some parts like this where you also have to relax the horizontal geometry select a face over here then control shift right click on another face and you're going to select everything in between those and then we're just going to use shift alt right click to deselect all the vertical geometry and again we can just go loop tools relax and that's going to become very smooth another way that you can add more geometry without fucking up your mesh with the subdivision surface modifier is this add one or two levels of subdivision surface now select Select the edges which have to stay sharp and also select all the outlining edges like this. Just make sure that you don't select any edges which are supposed to stay round like this part right here. Once we got some edges selected such as these right here, press N in the item menu, set the mean crease value to 1. Now these are going to become completely sharp and it's almost like they're excluded from the subdivision surface modifier. But not in the sense that the geometry is not subdivided, it's just that the subdivided geometry does not become smooth. So now if we apply this, we got new geometry, but we didn't fuck up the shape. And you can do this as many times as you like, and now you got a whole bunch of new geometry to work with. Next, let's talk about how to use this. 
Here's an example of a Koenigsegg Regera diffuser in the back. Let's say that you want to add these blades or whatever the fuck you call these things back here. And obviously you have to keep perfect topology as you're doing this. There are two ways that you can do this. The first way is this. You can add more geometry until you have faces which are so thin that they can match this width right here. Usually this is a good way to add details. This time it's probably not the best way, but let me show you anyway so you know what I'm talking about. We're going to keep subdividing this and applying the subdivision surface modifier until our geometry is so thin that we can just select a face loop like this and use that to create one of these. Now this is an extreme example. We can just keep applying the subdivision surface modifier until we have so much geometry that we can just easily extrude one of these blades. Here's an example of that. You can select a face loop like this, extrude right click alt s and hold down shift and give this only a little bit more thickness. And now we're going to take this face here with alt s we're going to push it outwards like this. Then down here at the bottom we're going to take another face like this and again with alt s we're going to inflate it then i'm going to select a vertex on the right side over here and also a vertex on this part right here and with my loop tools curve i can now use these vertices to control the shape of this entire little extrusion so loop tools curve and that completely changes the shape of this entire edge loop based on these two vertices which i had selected do the same thing over here on the other side using the exact same vertices and now you have a perfect blade right here although you still probably have to add some subdivision surface to get the shading under control and when you add a subdivision surface modifier you probably have to bevel some of these sharp edges so select all the edges around the base and around the top Control b to bevel them add a tiny bevel like this two segments and a shape value of one and now you got a beautiful blade with perfect topology although this is going to give you an insane polygon count and this is probably not great because it's going to slow down your project a lot so let's undo this and by the way you can easily undo this by using alt right click to select an edge loop around the top Control plus to select everything x delete faces give me this gap right here face grid fill now we can go ahead and add a decimate modifier on subdivide two iterations apply and now we go back to what we have before we applied the subdivision surface modifier here's another way that you can create these blades or these fins right here without adding more geometry select a segment of an edge loop like this then with control b we're going to bevel this and again we need two segments for this and we get some triangles at the ends here and some end gons here as well as at the bottom control r and click here to add a loop cut also over here now we added some new vertices and this is going to help us cleaner topology do the same thing on the underside over here then place the 3d cursor over here with shift s on this middle vertex set the pivot point to 3d cursor then select these vertices which we just added with the loop cut s to scale and scale them by a factor of 1.5 or maybe 1.4 to make them more round and do the same shit up here by placing the cursor here and scaling this by 1.4 now you can join this with j also join these down here that way we have only quads here now select this face in the corner go up to the top control shift right click on this face extrude right click alt s and you're going to turn this into one of these fins now it might be a good idea to inset this with i to make the top sharper take this double g to slide it down merge vertices by distance now when you add some more subdivision surface you can bevel this you can also add a loop cut up here and that's just another way that you can attach this type of shit to your curved surface now here's the final and likely the most important tip in this video let me try to explain this with a simple example this diffuser right here has some holes in the back as you can see right here we're going to create those holes by selecting some surfaces like this deleting the faces there let's do the same thing on the inside and now we have to add some thickness to this object first let's apply the mirror modifier sure you can use a solidify modifier now but i don't like modifiers let's select everything extrude right click alt s and then we can manually add some thickness to this object we're going to check even offset here and we're good to go now the problem is that these edges around these holes are way too soft they're supposed to be much sharper so we have to do something to control these edges and improve them there are two ways to do this either you can bevel these edges with control b and as you can see that's going to add some supporting geometry around this hole which is going to shade them better it's going to change how the subdivision surface modifier behaves here and it's going to give you the result that you want or you can press n in edit mode and set the mean crease value to one you can then press control e mark sharp object shade auto smooth and crank the angle all the way up now you got a completely sharp edge although this is probably not going to be very realistic but sometimes using creases is going to be useful for you so there's that either way you're gonna have to select every single one of these sharp edges here and in some cases that might be easier said than done 
For example, if we want to use Alt right click and Shift Alt right click, we gotta manually go all over this mesh. That might take 10 fucking days, and we don't have 10 days. We gotta do this shit right now. Alternatively, you might want to go Shift G, select similar face angles. This is going to select all the sharp edges, but this might also select the edges on the corners on the inside, and we definitely don't want to bevel those. This shit needs to stay round. So here's a 350 million IQ selection trick that you can use to get this type of shit under control. We're going to go to face select mode, and now with Alt right click, we can very easily select all the geometry on the inside of the hole. And with shift alt right click, we're going to select all the other face loops also around this entire surface. And now we have all the edges selected, which are supposed to be sharp. The problem is we also selected the edges which connect them and we don't want to crease those. And we definitely don't want to bevel those. So we have to deselect all these edges. And here's how you can do that. There is a simple selection tool, which allows you to deselect all the geometry on the inside of a selected surface. And you're only going to keep the edges around that surface. So select a surface like this, go up here to select, go to select loops and select boundary loop. That's going to leave you only with the edges around this surface. And guess what? This works perfectly in the situation which I just described to you here. We're going to select all these face loops, select, select loops, select boundary loop. And now we got only the edges which we want to bevel selected. So now we can just go control B, add a little bevel there. And this is exactly what we were trying to do this whole time. That's all I got for you in this video. If you want to learn more 400 IQ tricks like the ones I showed you in this video, then check out my Blender ebook. The link is below. I'm also doing a very detailed car modeling series on Patreon, so go check that out as well. Make sure to join our Discord. We got 3,226 members. We're doing a crazy modeling challenge right now. This will put your topology and your modeling skills to the test. But check out Thomas Collin for more information about that. But if you don't want to buy nothing or support my channel, then at least like the video and subscribe to the fucking channel. I got almost 300 videos completely for free. You can learn anything just from my channel. Also, follow me on Instagram and follow me on Twitter as well if you want to hear me say or see me type crazy shit that you've never heard before from a blender youtuber let me know what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one